I mean moment. It's funny. I've done a number of different viewpoints over the years. Less so in recent times. Mostly because I don't have as much to talk about. This time I've wanted to say something and quite honestly I haven't quite known what to say. In many ways I want to pay tribute to someone who has become an inspiration for me he was just a reporter not just a business anchor but he became a friend and a rock Earlier this week, on Tuesday the 24th of May, the world of business, television, journalism and broadcasting lost someone who we can truly describe as a legend. He might be unknown to a lot of you, but I can never forget him. His name was Mark Haynes. When I first knew him, or knew of him, he was the 9am anchor of the money wheel. Him and Dean Shepherd. If it was before the bell, it was Mark Haynes and Dean Shepherd on the money wheel. And in the 8 o'clock hour, it would be Kevin McCulloch and Felicia Taylor. But always, just before the bell, it was Mark Haynes and Dean Shepard. And then... Then came Squawk Box. anything I can say about Squawk Box that hasn't been said already. What it did for business television and indeed for live broadcasting in general cannot be measured. Cannot be uh, put into facts and figures. It was live it was unscripted. But more than anything else, it was Mark Haynes and his personality and his tenacity that drove that show. He was the old curmudgeon, the old school guy, in amongst a group of hotshots like Maria Bartiromo, Joe Kernan, and David Faber. All of them much, much younger than him. It was Zoo Radio brought to television and brought to business news. Uh, yet it was all that, and a hell of a lot more. There were factors you couldn't define, ingredients you couldn't list, that somehow managed to make Squawk Box much, much more than the sum of its parts 
the parts being the guest host, Mark Haynes, David Faber, Joe Kernan, Maria Bartiromo, and all the other little contributors who would add a little something. But it was more than all of them. At the centre of it all was Mark Haynes. Now, while the show was heavily formatted in order to make up for the fact that there wasn't really a script as such to keep the timings tight, very often, more often than not, the format would get thrown out the window. And you get an odd interview. And you just knew. I don't care what you say. You just knew that something special was happening. A rare television moment was happening. And whatever would have been set up for the next segment got thrown out the window. And the interview would continue into that next segment. And you knew something was going on there. You knew Mark Haynes was getting to the bottom of a story. Which is what he liked to do. It's what he did best. I guess like so many others of us, I can never forget what I was doing, what I was watching, when the news broke on September the 11th, 2001. It was Squawk Box. It was CNBC. It was Mark Hayes. Normally in those situations I'd have gone to CNN or to the BBC or somewhere else. But not that time. I'm sure I flicked around occasionally to see how the others were covering it. But I came back to CNBC and I came back to Mark Haynes and you know why? Because of the ultimate professionalism that he brought to the table on that story. Almost more than any other time, he managed to be the consummate total professional. Even at the moment when the second plane flew into the other tower. A moment that stunned us all. Everyone who saw it, I'm quite sure, would have been totally stunned at watching that happen live on TV. And yet Mark epitomized the sign that we see so much these days. The one that says, keep calm and carry on. Because you know something? That's exactly what Mark did. He kept calm and he carried on. He carried on reporting. He carried on telling the story. Never embellishing it. Never making it into more than it was. Just told it. I give CNBC a lot of praise for that coverage that day. And nobody, but nobody, could have done a better job the Mark Haynes.
Later on, he would bring his somewhat curmudgeonly style to a new show called Squawk on the Street, alongside a new and again young co-anchor, Erin Burnett. And yet, always, always, while he might have been the old curmudgeon, the old school guy, and Owen might have been the young hotshot. It he always, always made it work. Because he would play straight to her strengths. And just would make the program flow. Funny, the New York Stock Exchange floor came to a sudden halt. Around 10 to, 10 to 10, 5 to 10 that day. When the death of Mark Haynes was announced. We've seen all sorts happen at the New York Stock Exchange. We've seen the Dow Jones Index tumble and recover in minutes. I can't forget the crash of the 1990s and watching the market tumble 350 points then close for half an hour about 10 past 2 Eastern Time I believe it was and at 23 the markets reopened and 200 points fall off just like that in half an hour and then it closed again for an hour 50 minutes before the end of the trading day in essence it closed early even the next morning on Squawkbox Mark Haynes would give that context No matter what the situation, even the calling of the Haynes Bottom in 2009, just literally 24 hours before it happened, there are so many memories I have of Mark Haynes, so much about him that I admired. And still do. While in UK broadcasting terms his name might not be so well known as your Hugh Edwards and your David Dimblebees. He was as good as any of them. And much like Squawk Box, this edition of Viewpoint has been done totally unscripted. In respect and honour of Mark Haynes. Stay sharp. Stay tuned.